Hey guys, for this project I 3D printed this door with the Bamboo Lab printer from the previous video and I'm just going to start weathering it, adding the paint, um, different things like that. And I'm going to put this door in the middle of the sand world in my dream world that I'm creating and make it just a really odd kind of thing and even kind of fantasy feeling I think. If I use the right colors and light it might look like Narnia or if I change those colors it might look really dark and intense. So I think I'm going to have a little bit of fun playing with that finished look. But I've just 3D printed these pieces and started using the li liquid latex technique just to get some paint on there, make them look more old and decaying. And then I created this base as well. On the topic of the dream world I've been creating, if you have any ideas of some wacky different things that you think would be really cool as a part of this world, leave a comment and let me know. Maybe I'll pick one and actually bring it to life. I plan on keeping all of these for maybe a short film or something in the future where I can really delve more into this world and have a lot of pieces to use for it. These are all printed on that 3D printer as well, just some tree models that I found on the internet. And I'm just adding this texture paste with a little bit of brown paint so that they don't look as smooth and printed, but they have more of that texture. And I'm not gonna make these very detailed, they're gonna be in the background and more silhouetted. Now to get a more interesting and colored look to the final shots, iFootage sent me over some of their new lights. These are a couple of new panels from them. This is the PL180C, which is their full RGB color version. They also sent me their bi-color version and a small handy light. So these are the three lights that iFootage sent me. This is the full RGB color version. This is the bi-color and this is the little handy light. They come in a few different colors and they're just small LED panels. The cool thing that I first noticed about a lot, all of these lights actually is they have modular, you know, little modifiers. So, so these come with the LEDs kind of exposed, but they give you a little magnet attachment to immediately put diffusion on the front. And the same with these, the diffusion is on that one right now. But if I open up the barn doors, which is also an accessory that comes with these panel lights, you can see the diffusion under here. If I spin it around and unlock the top, the top pops open. And so you can take modifiers like the barn doors or even the diffusion panel right out and get that bare lens LED chip again. The other cool thing with these panels is they have a V-mount battery slot right here and also one right on the battery pack. So you can have a battery in either place, which is super convenient. So I have one of these little V-mount batteries and it barely adds really any weight or bulk to it, but allows you to then go around with a light that is totally portable. They also have an app that you can connect on your phone, connect all the lights, control all of the features the brightness, the color, the intensities, all those things. And they're also pretty bright. Even the handy light, if you turn it on in full RGB mode, you know, it has a bit of kick to it. So this will work great for a little accent light. I use these for little effects lights and you'll see that later where you can put it in a small place and get a kick of light, especially a cool color. This RGB light up here is on 1% right now. Um, so you have a lot of latitude with the different colors and brightness settings. The build quality of these things is awesome. They are a little bit more hefty because it's all metal construction. There's very few plastic parts. They seem really well made. Everything that I've seen from iVotage has been like that. They're really good in their manufacturing, making sure they're high quality, and I love it. And they do also come with these carrying bags. Not a crazy cushion bag or anything, but super convenient to just throw it in. You can have your modifiers, you can have your battery, uh, packs, you can have your power supplies all up front, be able to go on a shoot on location really easily, especially if you have some batteries to throw in. I had a quick just show you the different color ranges and things. This is all at 1% intensity, but you can tune to a color and then change the saturation as well. So if you think this is too harsh of a purple, you want to dial it back, you can dial the purple color back and it'll go all the way down to white once you get to zero. There's a lot of features you can use with that and everything is available in the app to make it even easier. They also sent me these USB-C to DMX cables, which will allow me to control these lights over DMX. And I'm very excited to do that in a future video. When iFootage reached out to me, I also asked if they could send me one of their awesome tripods 
specifically for my slider systems. You know, my new Exebo system is a pretty heavy system and I've been using it on these nice motorized standing desks, but sometimes I need to be a little more flexible and my tripods are just too little for it. So they sent over this awesome T5 tripod set of legs. These things are good for like 40 kilograms or something like that, it's, it's crazy. And they have a quick bowl system that now allows you to just take the bowl out, screw it right onto something, drop it in and quickly attach it and tighten it and go. These things have been holding my Exebo, like I'll show you a little later, without a problem at all. Um, my Exebo is a little longer track than the Rhino. And so there's a tiny bit of flex when it gets to either end, but almost not noticeable on camera. And honestly, it's the most solid pair of legs that I've used, especially anywhere near this price point. So if you're looking for a tripod as well, something like this might be really great for these slider systems that are motorized and a little more heavy. All right, guys, so I've started to set up this little scene here. Obviously, I haven't put any sand down or anything, but I put my projector screen up with a background and I've got the iFootage lights on these two stands and one hiding behind the door and they all connect to their app so I can control them. So I can quickly just turn them on at the current settings, turn them off and I can demo them, change colors, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just starting to piece together the scene. I think I'm going to set up my camera real quick just to see what the point of view of the camera is gonna look like and really kind of dial in where I might want the lights and then I'll show you how I'm gonna change you know, the color intensity and dial them all in to get a really interesting scene. I'm gonna use some smoke and, and haze as well and just play around with this background um, with my projector to hopefully make it look like it's a much bigger scene than it actually is. So this is the T5 tripod that they sent me. Like I said, I've been able to put my Xebo system on it, which is pretty heavy and there's very, very little flex. It's just been a really solid set of tripod legs. And so I use that to set up my Xebo and kind of get in a little closer than I normally could. Then I just started laying out a ton of this fine sand again. Just to cover all of these areas, I took some extra foam pieces to make a little bit more undulations of the sand, a little more hills. And I decided that I was going to try to make a little bit more of a texture walking up to the door. And so I'm using this little art figure here to just put in some little footsteps. It's a very subtle effect, but I think it adds to it. And as you can see, I'm using the two larger panel lights overhead. One to have this really nice blue backlight. One to just kind of fill in some of the shadows in the front. And then the handy light is inside that door. Their mobile app made it really easy to just control all these and set the color and intensity that I wanted for each one. All right guys, so I have pretty much everything set up at this point. I have the one RGB panel for my footage above, just giving some really dark blue cast to the background. The second bicolor one, giving a little more of a fill light to the door and some of the trees. That's also pretty blue, but not quite as blue. And then I have the little handy light inside making this red color. I've tried a couple different colors. I think the red is my favorite, but it's so easy with the app to dial these all in to exactly what you like as you're watching the screen. It just makes it really convenient. And I'm also playing around with my Smoke Genie, adding a little bit more uh, fog and different effects to the door to make it really weird and surreal and dreamy. So let's get shooting, see what we can come up with. I'm really just trying to get this one master shot. I'll, I'm sure, get a couple others as well, but the one master shot is what I'm looking for. So let's see how we can do it. Here is each light individually. No lights the back blue light, this side fill, and then the effect light from the door. And then of course, some smoke. Then I keyframed a quick move with my Xebo on the T5 tripod legs and went to it. All right guys, let me know in the comments what else you think I should do in this dream world that we're all creating and stay tuned if you're into this miniature filmmaking at all. I plan on doing a lot more advanced techniques 
playing with some motion control and controlling lights with TMX and virtual production. So subscribe and reach out to me in the comments if you have any questions about filmmaking with miniatures and what I can maybe explore in the future. All right guys, I'll see you next time.